after I just scared you with the Goldman Hodgkin Hotz equation. Um, and you don't have to worry, we don't we are not going to calculate with that equation. But it's kind of important to see how the membrane potential comes about. And so now here we have arrived at the resting membrane potential. So we can say that the resting membrane potential is come is the contribution of each one of the ions that are players and their concentrations inside to outside. So it's the ratio of the concentrations of each ion on either side of the membrane. The main players, of course, for us being sodium and potassium, but also calcium chloride, they do contribute to the resting potential. So um, you can um, scroll down here to this image. It shows it pretty well. So if you were to stick a voltmeter into an excitable to an excitable membrane, uh, what you would measure is approximately minus 70 millivolts. It depends a little bit on the cell. It could be somewhere between minus 65 and minus 85. And we'll see different uh, types of cells where you have variance from the minus 70 millivolts. But your average Joe neuron is at minus 70 millivolts. And that is actually what Hodgkin and Huxley, the two guys that got their Nobel Prize for figuring out the action potential, that's what they measured. They used um, the giant axon of squid and stuck an electrode in there, and then they measured the resting membrane potential at minus 70 millivolts, and then they, they measured the changes to the membrane potential as that axon is experiencing and propagating an action potential. But here back to the resting membrane potential. So we are here at minus 70 millivolts and those minus 70 millivolts come about from the concentration gradients of sodium and potassium. Again, sodium being high on the outside, low, small on the inside. Potassium huge on the inside, very small on the outside. Plus, we have those fixed anions that contribute then to the overall negative voltage of the member potential. So inside to outside, we are talking about minus 70 millivolts. Now that is close to the potassium equilibrium potential. The potassium equilibrium potential would be at minus 90 millivolts. So minus 70 is pretty close to that. It's definitely not close at all to the sodium equilibrium potential, would be, which would be at plus 66 millivolts. So we're pretty close to the potassium equilibrium potential, and that is because we have leak channels, potassium leak channels that um, bring the membrane potential pretty close to the equilibrium potential for potassium. Now here, of course, the important role of the sodium-potassium pump. I mean, without that pump, you would not be able to establish those very steep concentration gradients. Uh, we talked about this before. The sodium-potassium pump tirelessly, 24-7, 365, will pump two potassium ions into the cell for every three sodium ions that it pumps out. Every round of two potassium in and three pot sodium out will cost one ATP. And so that is the main contributor to the amount of calories that you need, the energy that's necessary to just survive. You need to make sure that your sodium potassium pump has the ATP that is required to establish these concentration gradients. Now, electric signals such as an action potential are due to the movement of ions. And so we have our nice concentration gradients of sodium and potassium mostly. And we also have ion channels. And now, depending on what the cell wants to do in communication and nervous system, we are opening and closing ion channels, allowing or not allowing the flux of ions down their concentration gradient. These ion channels, they control ion permeability, and the ones that you see in the nervous system, most of them are voltage gated. That means they open or close depending on changes to the membrane voltage. Um, what opens or closes these ion channels depends from one type to another, um, but I will give you the threshold voltage for all of the ones that are important for the 
um, action potential and we'll get there. And once we do the synapses, you will also see chemically gated ion channels. And we also, in the signal transduction lecture, we already talked about chemically gated channels. And then we have mechanically gated channels. They open or close depending on some mechanical event. Um, there are very few of them that we will be discussing, but we'll get to those uh, when we do muscle. Now let's take a look at here some terminology that you need to know. Um, here we are at minus 70 millivolts. That's your resting membrane potential. If the membrane potential gets less negative, that means it moves toward zero, but it doesn't go past the threshold voltage. So it just moves up towards less negative. We call that a depolarization. If we're going from minus 70, more negative, we call that a hyperpolarization. So if you're going below minus 70, if minus 70 is your resting membrane and you go below that, then we call that a hyperpolarization. Now, if event is not strong enough to cause an action potential, but it does cause a change to the membrane potential, then we call these graded potentials. Uh, graded potentials, they are local and they decay over distance. So um, they're called graded because they can be large or small, which is in contrast to action potentials that are always the same. An action potential, it's either you have an action potential or you don't have an action potential. They're always the same strength. Graded potentials, they can be large, they can be small, but they are always so small that they do not cause an action potential. Now they can be excitatory or inhibitory. If they're excitatory, that means they're bringing the membrane closer to threshold for an action potential, so it makes it more likely to get an action potential. Or they could be inhibitory. That means that we're going into hyperpolarization, makes it less likely to get an action potential. So here are some examples for graded potentials. They may be fairly large when they're first starting out, like this one right here, but then it decays over the distance as it's traveling through the cell body. And by the time it arrives here at the exon hillock where the trigger zone is for an action potential, this is the result, no action potential. Here is a medium one and here's a tiny little graded potential. Again, they decay over distance and um, they are not strong enough to cause an action potential to be generated right here at the exon hillock. Now in contrast to the graded potentials, uh, we are now moving toward action potentials. Action potentials, they're all or nothing. Very important, all or nothing. There's no such thing as a small or a large action potential. All action potential, you either have one or you don't have one. They travel long distances. They don't decay over the distance. They're always the same strength. And again, you either have one or you don't have one. All or nothing principle. As an action potential is generated at the trigger zone here at the axon hillock, then it will travel the entire length of the axon. It will not decay, it will not get smaller, it just keeps going. And you will sequentially trigger action potentials throughout the length of the axon, and then eventually it will arrive at the axon terminal. And there's no difference between the first and the 50th and the hundredth and the two hundredth action potential that is generated along the length of this axon. Now let's talk about the changes to the membrane potential, the ions that are fluxing and how they're generating this action potential and how sequentially these ion channels open and close and what exactly happens. And this figure right here is arguably the most important one in this chapter eight. Um, it is extremely important. I want you to know every single step and um, you need to really understand what happens. Uh, this is so fundamental to physiology. Um, you know that I was working in the Department of Physiology at UC Irvine, and this was our department logo. This was the logo um, image on the department t-shirt. So this is how important the action potential is. It is fundamental to understanding the nervous system, 
and basically how your body works um, this is electrical communication and um, you need to understand every single step so let's get started here um, we have a membrane at, membrane at rest minus 70 millivolts that's our resting membrane right here that's number one resting membrane potential right here now something happens that brings this membrane closer to threshold threshold is considered about minus 55 millivolts so threshold let's extend this here minus 55 millivolts okay some event occurred that caused the membrane potential to get less negative and we're crossing threshold at threshold voltage gated sodium channels will open up now that means well where is the majority of the sodium it's on the outside of the cell so now if you open an ion channel that allows the flux of sodium ions well they will go down their concentration gradient that means the permeability of the membrane to sodium increases so now all the sodium is rushing into the cell it was mostly on the outside and it's rushing into the cell well you're adding now a lot of positive charges to the interior of the cell and that means your membrane potential your voltage that you're measuring is going up fast really fast look at the timeline this is from here to here is one millisecond so the sodium rushing into the cell causes the membrane potential to shoot up to plus 30 millivolts now a very important event happens at plus 30 millivolts these voltage gated sodium channels they are wide open at that point and if this event wouldn't occur then we would go all the way up to the equilibrium potential for sodium which is plus 66 millivolts but at plus 30 millivolts something very important happens and that is that these sodium channels inactivate and i have to tell you this is really important i had to change the figure here literally because the book was inaccurate about this but it's very important that you understand that point number five sodium channels inactivate this is really important and it's different from closing let me show you how so here is let's draw some generic um, sodium channel right here and here would be the membrane that it's sitting in sorry it's a little crooked here but oh well and so the open closing gate is something in the middle right here this thing can open and it can close so right now it will be closed and we can open it up just move remove this and it's open now sodium channels have another mechanism they have like this little tethered ball and right now this is the inactivation gate so now we can move this thing and plug up the port right here so now we're going to swing this little tethered ball in place and now this is an activation okay so please do not confuse this inactivation is very different from closing inactivation means that we're plugging up the pool right here ions can no longer flux so in that sense it's similar if you're closing the channel also no ions can flux but this is very important to understand that there's a difference between closing and inactivating at any rate at five right here at, when we have plus 30 millivolts these sodium channels inactivate another important event happens at plus 30 millivolts voltage gated sodium channels will open up that's the other thing voltage gated pota potassium channels did i say sodium uh, i meant potassium so sodium channels inactivate at plus 30 millivolts and voltage gated potassium channels actually open up now where is the majority of the potassium well it's inside of the cell so now if we're opening up the potassium pores then the permeability of the membrane to potassium of course increases and all the potassium is rushing out so now if we are losing a lot of positive charges then obviously our membrane potential is gonna go smacking down right here okay uh, the so the potassium channels are relatively slow um, nothing is really slow about an actual potential but they're a little slower to respond than the sodium channels and so what ends up happening is that um, these pot the potassium quite a bit of it is leaving the cell and so you're overshooting because the 
um, the potassium channels are a little bit more sluggish to close and so a lot of potassium is left and we are going past minus 70 millivolts and that part is called hyperpolarization so now the membrane is hyperpolarizing going less negative I'm sorry, going more negative than minus 70 millivolts.